EES, pronounced EES, is an acronym for Engineering Equation Solver. And the basic function provided by EES is the numerical solution of linear and nonlinear equations. In the last video, we learned just the very basics about how to enter and solve these equations. And this video is going to provide an introduction to the variable information window and the variable information palette. So in the last video we had entered the three equations that are shown here. So these are three equations and three unknowns and we looked at how to obtain a solution to this system of equations. You can see a list of all the variables that are associated with an ease code in the variable information palette that appears here at the right side of the equations window. The variable information window can be accessed by selecting variable info from the options menu or alternatively by pressing the F9 shortcut key or pressing this shortcut key right here. So notice uh, in the variable information window that there's a row corresponding to each of the three variables that make up the problem and then there's a set of columns that each allow the user to change a different characteristic of these variables. The first column corresponds to the guess values that are used for the variables. So these are the values that are used to start the iterative solution process that Ease uses in order to identify a solution. And by default, the guess value for every variable is 1. So you'll note here that x equal 1, y equal 1, and z equal 1 are the guess values. And that's clearly not the correct solution, but it is the starting point for the solution process. For this system of equations, there are actually two solutions. And Ease has identified one of these two solutions, which is x equal 2.702, y equal 0.298, and uh, z equal 4.298. And the reason it identified this one is because it's closest to the guess values of x equal 1, y equal 1, and z equal 1. There is another solution that can be obtained, and you get that solution by changing the guess values. So for example, if we change the guess value for x to minus 5, then we're going to converge to the alternative solution x equals minus 3.7, y equals 6.7 and so on and the reason is because that's the solution closest to x equal minus 5. The tutorials found in section 5 provide substantial detail on how to control and examine the solution process that is used by ease. Lower and upper limits for every variable can also be set in the variable information window so for example if we wanted to restrict our solution to only those solutions for which the value of x is positive we can set the lower limit of x to be 0, as shown here. The display format that's used for each of the variables in the solution window can be adjusted right here in the variable information window. So we can change from auto format to a fixed number of decimal places or a fixed number of significant figures. Now we can also highlight the answers in the solution window in various ways, as you can see here in this column. Um, so here let's change the variable x to nine decimal places and we'll put a box around it in the solution window. Uh, the other columns correspond to things that haven't been touched upon yet. So the units and the alternative units of every variable can be set here as well. We'll talk a lot more about that in the units section of these tutorials. And then finally, the variables can be tagged as being key variables. And this is a feature that is discussed in the advanced features tutorial in this section. Notice that it's easy to drag options down so that they apply to all or to a subset of variables. So for example, I can easily change the guess value uh, for one variable and then drag it down so that it applies to all of them. One extremely nice feature of the variables information window is that it allows you to quickly change a variable name while retaining all the variables information. So for example, maybe I've decided for whatever reason that I want to change the name of the variable x to x sub d. And uh, I can do that just by going into the equation window and finding every value of x and replacing it with x sub d. Um, but what's much more convenient is if I just uh, replace the name right here in the variable information window and then select OK. And what you'll see is that it has replaced x throughout the entire code with x sub d. But even more uh, importantly, the, the, the variable x sub d, the new variable, inherits all the characteristics that x had. So guess values, limits, units, etc. You can bring up a smaller version of the variable information window by clicking on the variable in the variable information palette right here uh, on the side of the equations window. So uh, here when I click on x, you'll see I have a smaller version of the variable information window that only includes the variable x. 
and I can change whatever characteristics I want to change in X. So here I'll change the guess value to 10. And you can see that that's been reflected no matter how I access this information. Note that the variable information uh, palette here, this, this variable information window can also be used as a sort of smart find command. So if I just uh, right click on a variable in the palette, it's going to locate it in the ease equation window. And if I right click on it again, it finds the next occurrence of that variable and so on and so forth. So this is really handy for, for very large programs like this one here. Here if I want to find a variable, I just click on it and it will take me through to all the instances of that variable. So this has been an introduction to the variable information uh, window and palette. And this again is one of a series of tutorials that's meant to describe the operation of the E software. If you want more information about Ease, you want to obtain the software, or if you want to access more of these tutorials, please go to uh, the website fchart.com.